Hey cruisers, in tonight's show we go live to Shally, who is on the Carnival Valor with Frankie the Cruise Director. We have another great cruise photo of the week. Josh Waitsman, also known as Big Sexy, is our guest tonight. We have another fun complaint for our complaint corner. Jess from the U.S. will be here with another behind-the-scenes segment from the Triumph. And much, much more. Grab your seagulls and hold on, because this is Cruise Week TV Live. Well, hello everyone. I'm Matt and I'm the host of CruiseWeek.tv, the live weekly show where we bring you the fun and exciting guests to talk about and learn the ins and outs of cruising together. Shally is on the Carnival Valor right now and about to head to dinner, but we want to check in with her before anything else as she has something to present to the cruise director on there. Hey Shally, nice cheetah gear you have on there. Awesome. Yes, it's Pete and I uh, with the CCTV at we got quite a lot of Cheetah Divas over there. Say that again. We have a lot of Cheetahs and Divas over there. So what are you all up to tonight? Yes, we are. you do. all staying out of trouble? Well, we just got back from Cozumel. We had a big group of people that went to Mr. Sancho's. And we also had a group of us that went on a private boat. We had a great day. It was beautiful weather. No rain. It was pretty windy. I think everybody got kind of windblown uh, out there, but we had a really, really great time. It was a beautiful day. I think nice. we might have some pier runners, did we? Did we have some pier runners? You notice yeah, how they? Do you notice how they're like? They don't. Whoosh, we don't talk about that. <laughs> no, we don't know. We don't know. There probably was. <laughs> Gosh. So, what are you guys all up to today? I hear you have something to present to the cruise director. Yes, we do. Um, Frankie was is supposed to be here with us in a couple of minutes, but his schedule is so tight. So we have a, a donation that we all came together to make for uh, St. Jude's, the official charity for Carnival Cruise Lines. And Frankie is supposed to be here any minute now. I hope that he walks in the door. But uh, over here we have, if we can uh, look over here, this is Melanie McRae over here. Melanie was in... <laughs> Melanie was in charge of our St. Jude's raffle. She got all of our t-shirts together. She got all the money together. Uh, how much, and this is Patty Brower over here from uh, WePromoYou.com. And you can see our big check here from the Divas for $1,335. Wow. That's so awesome, you guys. Are you there, Matt? Yeah, of course. That's so awesome. You guys okay. are doing such a great job. Is everyone sporting the cheetah gear tonight? Yeah, we. Yeah, tonight's cheetah night. So everybody wears their animal print. And we uh, last night was our shot fest and uh, we wore all our shot fest t-shirts and we had all of our glow gear on. Uh, we had so much fun. And then tonight's cheetah. Oh, we have a, one of our man servants. Where'd Steven go? Over there. Where's Steven? There he is. Oh, there's Steven. Two of us. Well, there's two of them, but I just wanted to point out Steven's wonderful uh, cheetah bow tie that he's wearing tonight and the, and and his ears he, the, the little ears up there so even guys like to get involved oh, oh and here's robert another man servant his friend tonight <laughs> we have a couple of uh, guys that come with us on our diva cruise it's really traditionally supposed to be about being a girls cruise but we do have some husbands and boyfriends that come along and and we uh, as long as they agree to be our man servants on the entire cruise and then they can come along with us and they've done a great job at being our man servants and helping all of us keep track of our bags and our shoes and our drinks and our oh and it's Frankie's here. Nice. I made it. I made it. Look, I'm wearing my Divas hat too. I'm wearing my Divas hat. <laughs> uh, we went ahead and did the check because they put us on oh. first place. But we do want to show Frankie this is Patty over here. We want to show you the check. Good times, good times. This is super exciting. Look I know. Up. Look at that. And once again, $1,335. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, well, I wanted to, to, to ask that. Does anybody have any questions for Frankie while, we, while we've got him here? He's got a few minutes, mm -hmm. actually. So I didn't know if anybody had a, a question for Frankie. Uh, we, unfortunately, I think Facebook Live is not working correctly at the moment. So we are not having a lot of questions or comments coming in. But Frankie, uh, I am really honored okay. to be able to meet you. It's really nice. So, uh, Shally, how the are you? The volume's to... really going down over on your end, Matt. Sorry about that. I'll try yelling a bit louder. Are you able to hear me now? Okay. <laughs> Go to the light. Is that oh, any better? Can you hear yep. us? Yes, of course. We can definitely hear you. You have a very loud voice, so I'm able to pick you up really easily. So, Frankie, what are you going to be able to do with this check exactly? I have spell service you want to call. You want to call? <laughs> you want to call me? Good dog live on the air. <laughs> One perk to being the cruise director, right? You got the satellite phone. <laughs> well, I don't know if I don't know if you guys can hear us or not, or if we've lost. We you are able to hear you. Are you not able to hear us at all? Anyone? Anything? I can hear you a little tiny you. bit, but it's really, little really low, bit. and I can't see Matt at all. Ah, uh, gotcha. Uh, unfortunately, we're having a little, uh, a little bit of technical difficulties. Are you able to hear me a bit now? Still? We can see you it's now. It's better, and I can see you now. I can see you now, but... Why don't uh, you know that you know how the the internet on the ship? Sorry, Frankie, mm. it's not always the best. So, you know, it's going in and out. <laughs> they try no worries, really hard, but good, everybody's using it all at once. So, uh, but anyway, I know you got Big Sexy on tonight for your interview. So, I'm sure he gets to probably get a better reception for you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's say good night. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Say bye. 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 The show, Dwayne, he's here with us in spirit. He's sitting right here in this chair. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you for your donation. Everybody's great. Bye. Thanks, Shelly. We have you and the rest of the divas. I hope that we have an amazing cruise. Just don't get thrown off the ship. So I want to let you guys know that this and all the wonderful abilities we have to bring in guests remotely wouldn't be possible at the level we do without vMix. VMix is a live production software that powers our live show and many other high-end productions, from church services to football games and more. Live productions run on VMix. What our producer Bird really liked when he was trying to improve a show was that they give you a full 60-day trial of everything. That way you can test it out risk-free before you buy for two full months. Then they have systems starting from just $350. If you're going to do any sort of live streaming, you need VMix. Try it at vmix.com today. So Jess is back complete with Bo and a puppy dog. Jess is the cruise director of the Carnival Triumph and is sending us behind the scenes video every week to answer your questions and show you a little more of what life is like on a cruise ship. Hi everyone, Jess from the US here and thank you so much for enjoying the first video. So I'm back with more and I wanted to do a little fun segment today called crafts in your cabin. So I'm back here in my cabin and I wanted to teach you how to make a puppy dog towel animal. It's actually one of my favorite events here on board. So while I'm talking, make sure you grab yourself a bath towel and then you're gonna need a smaller hand towel, okay? So grab a bath towel and a smaller hand towel and I'm gonna show you step by step how to make that puppy dog. But first, I know a lot of you had different requests and uh, there's certain areas, unfortunately, I can't go and record. So for example, the bridge is completely off limits. I'm not allowed to do any recording on the bridge, but I'll see if I can talk to the captain for you. Um, he's a fantastic captain from Italy. His name's Captain Yemi, but he also has a nickname. His nickname is Captain Yummy because he goes to the gym a lot. So maybe I'll be like a creeper and go to the gym and secretly record when he does his pull-ups. It's quite entertaining to watch. So I'll, I'll see what I can do for you there. Um, also, I know a lot of you had some questions about our brig, our jail on board. And it's really not that exciting. It's just a holding room and that's for extreme, extreme cases. If there are any security issues on board, we will actually confine guests to their cabin and place security outside their door. And if they get really extreme or if the feds have to get involved, that's when I'll place them in the brig. Um, I know a lot of questions were about our medical center 
and I'm actually really great friends with our senior physician on board. Her name is Jackie, and she's actually from Ohio, and she does this as retirement. So she'll come on board for six weeks, four weeks, hop on and off as she pleases, and this is what she does for retirement. So it's quite fun there. So I'll see if I can get you a tour of the medical center. Uh, there can't be any guests in there, obviously, so I'll see if I can go maybe on a New Orleans day right in the morning when there's no guests on board and do a quick tour for you. I know some of you want to see the morgue. That's a little bit creepy, okay? Just a little bit creepy. Uh, <laughs> let's hope for everyone's safety and, and uh, that it's empty. Um, obviously, I'd get in big trouble if I showed you a video of that. So I'll have to make sure there's no guests on board when I go into the medical center. But if I can't give you a tour of the medical center, I do have a fantastic story. It's called Weekend at Jackie's. It is the strangest medical story you'll ever hear. And I'm going to share it next cruise video okay so make sure you keep watching cruise week tv because that's coming up that story will be next week but like i said i'm here for crafts in your cabin all right it's one of my favorite activities on board so i want to teach you how to make a puppy dog a puppy dog so you're going to start with your big towel your bath towel okay you want to shake it out shake it out all right shake it out shake it out shake it out you're going to start with the shorter edge. Doesn't matter which edge, start with the shorter edge. I'm gonna to try to do it on my couch, but it's a little bit easier if you do it on the floor. All right, and then you're just gonna start rolling. You're gonna start rolling from the shorter edge, nice and tight, and hopefully a lot straighter than I'm doing it. Sorry, you can't really see. So you're gonna start rolling nice and tight until you get to the middle, all right? Once you get to the middle, you're going to stop and roll from the other side. Let's see if I can switch it over here. So you want two nice, even rolls. So we're doing this all together. Make sure they're nice and tight, nice and even. Like I said, I'm doing this on the couch, so hopefully your rolls are a little bit straighter than mine. And you're doing the same thing from the other side. And I'll hold it up in just a second. So two nice, even rolls. like that two nice even rolls okay so once you have those two even rolls you're going to fold it in half so the crease is on the outside you see the crease on the outside the crease you're going to hold it you're going to hug it so you see the start of four legs now you're going to reach inside and pull the little tabs out so you have feet so you have your puppy dog feet so pull them out so you see the four little feet then you want to take the top foot, you want to take the top foot and the bottom foot of one side in one hand, and you're going to take the top foot and bottom foot of the other side in another hand, and you're going to pull. You're going to pull apart. Now this is a very common towel animal base. We use this for the bunny rabbit, and we use it for the monkey. We also use it for the puppy dog, which we're making right now. Right now we should have the dead chicken. Dead chicken right there, okay? Yeah, dead chicken. So you're going to lay it flat on your table right next to you. So it looks like that. All right. So you're going to lay it flat over because that's the base. So we're done with the base. So now we need to make the puppy dog head. So you want to take your smaller towel, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. And you want to fold it in half. Take the long top edge, fold it down to the bottom edge. Fold in half. Right? Hot dog way. Hot dog way. And this is where it gets a little tricky. All right, this is where it gets a little tricky because you want to lay it down in front of you. You want the crease facing away. So you want the crease facing away, okay? You are going to karate chop that center. You're going to karate chop that center. You are then, let's see if I can do it up here. Yeah. You're going to karate chop the center, okay? Karate chop that center. You're then going to reach down to the bottom right corner and you're going to fold it past your hand. So you have a nice wing, nice wing. You're then going to do the same thing to the other side. All right, now I'm going to show you step by step again, this time pointing right at the towel. Okay? So we have it folded in half. Let's go back to the half because this is where it gets a little tricky. Fold it in half. Karate chop the center. Karate chop that center. Once again, the crease is facing away from you. You're then going to reach for this bottom right corner and you are going to fold it down past your hand. 
So we have a like little stingray. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Fold it down. Fold it down. Perfect, good, good. All right, so let's try the next step. So you have our stingray. Stingray, stingray. And then you take the tip, you're gonna fold it in the back. Fold it in the back, just like that a few inches. So then you're going to take your outside wing, you're going to fold it right to the top center, take the other wing, fold it to the top center, and then all you're going to do, you're going to take your two sides and you're going to roll, roll, roll in at the same time. Okay? So you take those two sides, you're going to roll in, roll in, so you've rolled it in, you're then going to flip it over, and you have your puppy dog. Flap down those ears. you have your ruff, ruff, puffy puppy dog there. You're then gonna place it on your body and make it all nice, cross the legs a little, place the head down, and I will show you what your puppy dog should look like. So we have your cute puppy dog. Very nice. Now, our housekeeping stewards have been with the company for 10 plus years. I'm still working on my puppy dog creation, but definitely don't be too hard on yourself if you are trying the puppy dog or any towel animal for the first time. So it takes a little bit of practice. So keep practicing, all right? There's your little puppy dog. Hopefully you had fun with crafts in your cabin for this segment. Like I said, next segment, I'm gonna tell you all about the weekend at Jackie's, so get ready for that amazing story. But I wanna, I wanna see your puppy dogs, so um, please find me at Facebook at Jess from the US. Post your pictures of your puppy dogs, make them cute, put some sunglasses on them, put them in a fun little area, and I'm gonna pick my favorite and feature it on my Instagram. So make sure you find me once again at Jess from the US right on Facebook. And thanks again for all the likes and all the love for the carnival photo competition. I am in the lead, so thanks for all the fans and support there. It's really amazing. And I'm just going to end on this because um, I'm fairly new to Carnival. Uh, it'll be a year for me in May. And probably the best piece of advice I have for anyone out there who's kind of in a career funk or just not sure what's going on. I actually started for Royal for three and a half years. And I felt like they weren't letting me shine. So if you're in a situation where you know you can shine and you're not shining, maybe you have to take a different route to get to your ultimate goal in life because that's what I ended up doing. I actually went smaller to work for River Cruise Line and then applied to Carnival as cruise director and here I am. So live your dream, live it up, take some chances and enjoy and I'll see you next week where you're going to hear all about the weekend at Jackie's. But once again, find me on Facebook at Jess from the US, post your puppy dog photos because I want to see your cute adorable towel creations and I'm going to pick my favorite one and feature it on Instagram. So thanks for watching Cruise Week TV. I'm Jim in the US here on board the Carnival Triumph and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks Jess. That puppy looks adorable. We can't wait to see what you have for us next time. Now from one cruise director to another, Josh Waitzman, better known as Big Sexy, was a cruise director with Carnival but now he has recently hung up his mic and started working as a PVP with the cruise line. For those that don't know what a PVP is, it's like a travel agent that works specifically for the cruise line, a booking agent, if you will. So Josh, welcome to the show, and thanks for taking time out of your schedule to be with us today. Oh, we are having I'm some- just kidding, I'm just kidding, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just, I'm, I'm, a, I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. I, I know there's all these technical problems, it's just what I do, I apologize. Anyway. Before giving me a mini heart attack, let's get this interview started. How are we doing today? I'm great, man. How's everything? It's an honor to be here live on Cruise Week TV. It's, it's good. It's good. Uh, you know, mini heart palpitations there, but, uh, you know, hanging in there, hanging in there. So, yeah, somebody will sit down you, and get a <laughs> So you're a former cruise director, correct? Yeah, uh, I was with Carnival for, uh, still with Carnival for uh, a little over 13 years now, actually. Uh, I was a cruise director almost 10 um, on 21 different ships around the fleet. So uh, I've oh, wow. seen my share of, uh, of cruises and done my share of partying and met tons of great friends. And, and I, I don't know, I just, uh, I've had a whirlwind of a life, I guess the last 13 years have been absolutely amazing. 
Do you have one ship that you are most on over the others? Because uh, when I've talked to certain cruise directors, they usually have like that one ship that they kind of have loyalty with. So what's your loyalty ship? <laughs> I, I don't really. They kept moving me around. I guess uh, people on board couldn't stand me for that long. So they kept saying, all right, let's send them somewhere else. I'm oh, just gosh. saying. <laughs> no, uh, for, the last year, for the last year, I was actually on the Carnival Conquest. Um, she was my baby for the last year. And then before that, um, I was kind of bouncing around for a little bit. Actually did a uh, few contracts out on the Carnival Spirit out of Australia, which was probably mm -hmm. one of the highlights of my career. Um, yeah, the Pacific was amazing. Um, so I loved that ship. I guess, I guess you could say that I don't have one specific ship that I would, uh, I would claim to be mm -hmm. my baby. I was on the Glory for a long time. I was on the Miracle for a long time. And I did several contracts on all bunch of different ships. So um, each one of them actually was special in, in, in different kinds of ways, whether it be the team on board or the people that I met or um, the different itineraries. So I, I couldn't say that I have loyalty to one ship or another. They were all just awesome. <laughs> How did you start your career? Like what made you want to become a cruise director to begin with? <laughs> well, it started when I was 11 years old and uh, my mother took me on a cruise and uh, uh, carnival ecstasy actually. And I got back home and after the cruise, I, uh, I told mom I was going to be a cruise director one day. I was 11 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. I snuck into the casino a few times. I tried to get a few beers. They wouldn't serve me. Oh. So, so I figured I got to come back later on in life and, and party it up and have a good time. But um, I had, you know, I cruised a whole bunch of times and, you know, back home in Chicago, uh, after I uh, finished up school, I, uh, I was a, an executive recruiter in the pension and employee benefit industry. Mm -hmm. um, but I had always just loved being on stage. And I actually did some stand-up and improv comedy with uh, um, some different places back in Chicago. And I hosted some karaoke shows and worked for a buddy of mine who had a DJ service. And so I was always kind of entertainment. And I loved being on stage. And I loved... Uh, being in front of crowds and it was just kind of like my adrenaline rush, right? Um, but um, it just kind of all came together after I went on a cruise back in early 2004 with my mother, sister, and my grandmother. And I was kind of at an impasse as I was recruiting. And I, I was, I never forget, actually, I was sitting on Lido deck with my grandmother, who I was really close with. Yes, I'm a big sap. I'm mama's boy and grandma's boy. And she told me, Josh, you need to get a job on a big boat. She called them big boats. Um, and then she said something that actually changed my life. She, she quoted Confucius, for God's sake. She said, Josh, just remember, if you love what you do, you'll never have to work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. Hit me like a ton of bricks, and I literally got home after the cruise, and I walked into my boss's office on Monday morning, and I quit without a job um, and applied to Carnival. A week later, I was flying down to uh, the Carnival holiday, which was docked in Cozumel, Mexico. That was it. And by the way, so, I day on board my first ship, I met my wife. Ooh. So, so I got like, she's a singer and a dancer in the shows, and uh, I definitely married up. So did you start off right off the bat as a cruise director, or did you have to kind of like work your way up? No, believe it or not, I actually got hired as a karaoke host, right? Okay. Um, and then, uh, and you know, it wasn't too, uh, too much after that where I was uh, promoted up to a social host and then assistant cruise director after my second contract, and... Um, I started, I took over my first cruise, I'll never forget it, the Carnival Elation, from a guy who's, who I would consider even to this day my mentor, George Solano. Um, thank God he blew out his back. I got my first shot on the Carnival Elation in May of 2006, so it was two years after I started. Sorry, George, if you're watching. I hope you're better. Kevin Lowe Breyer. Sorry, guys, if I butcher names, I usually have quite a bit of trouble with last names. Also, if you guys have any questions for Big Sexy, for our former cruise director, make sure you put them in the comments below and we'll try to get to them the show. Anyway, Kevin on Facebook asks, how do you keep up the energy on debark and, uh, DB car debarkation days <laughs> and then welcome aboard on the same night? So those embarkation days are always the worst days, right? It's like literally we were out and up at six o'clock in the morning and debarkation on the conquest would finish somewhere around 11 30 or 12 o'clock i would have probably a couple hours to relax but that usually included emails and uh and meetings and whatnot and then uh and then again sail away party uh department meetings and then later on at night the welcome aboard show then a fun hop and i wouldn't be done till midnight and you know what kept me going what's that the 
you, you live off of adrenaline, right? For me, it uh -huh. was, it was meeting people. It was getting out there. It was, it was the thrill of, of the gig, right? Getting on mm -hmm. stage on the mic as tired as I was, as soon as I would walk on stage and you get people laughing, it just, it just fuels you. Yeah. You'll fall on your face exhausted afterwards after a day of doing that. But, but to be honest with you, it's just, I always tell people there's two things that will allow you to work out on chips for years and years and years without a day off working hours and hours and hours every day. You have to one, be crazy. And two, you got to love what you do and you can't fake it. And you really, and I mean this, everyone who's on those ships loves what they do. They love the hospitality industry. They love tourism and they're there for one reason. And that's because they just, they, they love doing what they do. Um, and that's what keeps you going. So are you a coffee type of person or are you no caffeine type of person? Cause when I talked to Jess in my interview on the carnival triumph, it's like, yeah, if I want energy, I might have like a soda, but I don't drink coffee or anything. And that's just mind boggling I'm, to me. I'm not much of a coffee guy. I'm not much of a caffeine guy. Um, if you asked me if I was a beer guy, that would be a different story. Are you a beer guy? No, no uh, I've, I've had a few in my time. <laughs> um, me too. Yes, for, me, for me, the, you know, we live off of power naps in the middle of the afternoon. Sometimes you'd be going from morning till late afternoon. I literally, there was times where I would lay my head down on my desk for a half hour and I'd be up and your body gets accustomed to doing this mm -hmm. and you just, and that gets you going through the rest of the night. And that was the same thing for embarkation nights like you were just talking about too. So what's the worst experience that you've ever had as a cruise director? I know there must be like, out of a long career, there must be like some of those bad days. What's one of those bad days that you remember? <laughs> there's, there's, do I have time for two? You have time for two. So one of the things that I, get, I guess I pride myself on is I'm always kind of the optimist. I, I like to take a negative situation and turn it into a positive, right? So mm -hmm. for me, <laughs> there's two that kind of stick out as being the crazy worst moments, which I tried to kind of turn around and, and, uh, and make it a positive. The first one was the first time I ever hosted an R-rated show was on the Carnival Holiday. It was even my first contract. This is uh, somewhere in the end of 2004. And uh, I was hosting Geechee Guy. I don't know if anyone's ever seen comedian Geechee Guy. He's hilarious. He did, um, he did all kinds of different shows uh, all over the world. He was on TV. But I was hosting a show, and I was nervous. And I said to the cruise director, um, uh, Paul Santley, at the time, I was like, what do I do? You know, I've never been on stage in front of so many people. And, and he said, just, just go out there, get them hyped up, have a little fun with it. That's all you have to do. It's really simple. And I was like, okay. Now, whenever I got really nervous, I had to pee. Mm -hmm. Permission? Hey, man. Sorry. So I had to go and I came back and I forgot to zip my fly. And I walk out on stage in front of 1,500 people in the theater and my fly was down. Nice. Nice. Didn't know it. And my white dress shirt is sticking out through my fly a little bit. People in the front row start, start laughing at me. So I look down, I freak out, I pull it out through my zipper a little bit more. And I just went on like, like nothing happened. I go backstage and Paul Stanley, the cruise director, was like, mate, that was brilliant. That's my attempt at an English accent. And so every time from there on out for the next several months, anytime I went to go host a uh, comedy show, my fly was down. Good, so, good. So, and the second one I can tell you is I was on Hasbro. I was hosting Hasbro, the game show on the Carnival Glory back in 2012. Um, and uh, the mats weren't put all the way together and weren't taped down like they were supposed to. And my, my front of my shoe caught the lip. Um, and I, right on stage, bam, right on my face. And I jumped up. And I just kept going, and um, so I had a, but I'll never forget it. And it's all over YouTube right now. I guess I, I guess it almost went viral. You can check it out on YouTube, by the way. Big Sexy Falls. <laughs> oh God. So, so, uh, so you just got to turn them around. You just got to go with the flow, mm -hmm. and that's that's the trick to being a cruise director for so long. You got to adapt. You got to go with the flow. Very, very good advice. I can definitely be used for a lot of other aspects of different jobs as well. Gosh, so. Ken Jordan uh, asks, how did you get the name Big Sexy? You have to, you have to ask this. Really? I, okay. I, I just asked the questions, you know, it's... <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I know. Um, so it, it's, and it's kind of almost embarrassing, but um, I, I got the nickname a long time ago because of, uh, because of all the ladies that I've been with. <laughs> why why is that that's not supposed to be funny man 
I mean, my producer laughed in my ear, so uh, I yeah. thought it would be good to laugh well, as well. Listen, you might know a couple of them. Um, Sarah Lee, Betty Crocker, uh, Aunt Jemima, mm -hmm. Wendy. Betty White. Huh? <laughs> huh? I had a crush on Little Debbie once. Oh, God. Actually, I crushed Little Debbie once. <laughs> That's okay. And one time back in college, I experimented with Ben and Jerry's, but it was just that one time, I swear. Good, good. No, no, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Matt. Um, it's really not that exciting of a story. I got it a long time ago. There was a, one of the first cruise directors I ever worked with um, was a big wrestling fan. And I guess there was a wrestler way back when, I never watched wrestling, but there was a wrestler named Big Sexy and he started calling it to me while I was on stage and it kind of caught on like wildfire. And every ship I went to, somebody would recognize me, whether a guest or a crew member, and say, hey, look, it's Big Sexy. And that was it. It just kind of caught on. I finally just decided, if you can't beat him, join him. So now I've had it for the last 12 years. Nice. So, so it seems like a lot of different cruise directors that I've talked to in the past always have that type of identity. I don't know if it was either usually given to them or if they kind of adapted it themselves, but that's always really cool that everyone has their kind of little flair. All, all a little bit special. <laughs> We're all so, a little bit, so we all got we all got our own things all our our little our little uh idiosyncrasies right mm -hmm. we've all got different shows and events and and our things and uh but i guess that's kind of the fun thing I had a lot of people come up to me and saying you know i cruised a whole bunch of times and one of the things that i that i love about going to different ships is it's, they all got different styles you think mm -hmm. it's a carnival ship you know the shows the you know kind of the format but it's going to be different because there's different personalities on every ship right it's the ship takes the personality of the crew members, the team members on board. So, Carissi Kali asks, uh, this is kind of backtracking a little bit, are you assigned for your cruise ships or do you kind of get bounced around a little bit? Typically, typically after a while, you get assigned to one ship. Um, there is other people, there's other guys that actually do uh, a lot of the fill-in work for the cruise directors when they would go off on, on vacations and whatnot. Uh, but typically speaking, after a while, after you get your tenure, you'll be assigned to one specific ship. Um, and the guys that are just kind of up and running, guys and girls that are just up and running and beginning in the careers will take over for a few months here and there. And after a while, generally, you'll get assigned to a certain ship. Um, there's a core management team on every single ship, which consists of, you know, captain, chief engineer, hotel director, uh, cruise director is part of that, guest services manager. You know the ships, you know the itineraries, you know the ports, um, and you work well with each other. So they like to kind of keep a, a certain management team together. Are some cruise ships easier to work on as a cruise director than others? For example, like smaller versus larger, are they all kind of about the same difficulty? You're always going all the time. You're always, mm -hmm. you're always on, I guess you could say. Um, the, uh, the toughness, I guess you could say to it is, um, what sort of itineraries is it? You know, uh, is there a lot of tender ports where you're working that? Because the entertainment team pretty much corresponds with the guest services team and they'll manage, you know, tendering and embarkation and the debarkation. And I wouldn't say there's one ship necessarily that's tougher than the other. The bigger the ship, the more stuff, the more parties, the more things that are going on. The bigger the ship, the busier you're going to be technically. Hmm. Right. So with a lot of bigger ships, I know they have a lot of different entertainments usually on board, whether it be like rock climbing or water slides or different things of that nature. So with ships that have quite a lot of different things to do on the ship alone, do you kind of have to step your game up a bit more and come up with your own type of routines? Or are most of your routines kind of the same ship to ship to ship? Uh, you, you could say that your each cruise director has a, a very specific type thing, right? Or has a special show or a special event that they do. Um, for me, for a long time, it was my, uh, my murder mystery, which is now become the carnival clue. Like I always loved that one. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, every ship kind of, you know, standard has the, the deck parties and, you know, carnival does everything they can to, 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 uh, ramp up the deck party. So deck parties are going to be kind of similar. If you go on different ships, you have an eighties rock and glow party now, and, um, you've got the reds versus blues mm -hmm. party. And I mean, there's all these different same events and shows but we're going to sprinkle the other stuff into it, right? So you got to still bring your thing, even though each ship might be a little bit different in terms of what they offer, in terms of the amenities and whatnot on board. What's your favorite show to host that you do? I love the Love and Marriage show. For me, for me, it was 45 minutes to an hour of, Josh, here's a microphone, here's three couples, go to town, go do your thing. So I used <laughs> to, the Love and Marriage show is always my thing as well. Um, but I loved... 
I love doing the deck parties and I love doing all of the, uh, the fun of shore, fun of board presentations on the ship. We'll walk you through all the different, you know, shows and the activities and the events and what they can expect when they get off in ports. Like I like doing those also. I like kind of being the informational guy. And, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but yeah, it was all it, good. Is it difficult to learn the shows and the routines? Cause when I was on a, a couple different ships, you know, I've only been on two cruises myself the cruise directors do a lot of different shows and it seems like they have quite a lot of things to memorize. What's the difficulty level about memorizing all those steps, words, phrases, everything else? Well, there's only a few things that you can actually say would be, would be, I guess you could say cruise director choreographed. Like mm -hmm. there's certain shows that are branded like, like um, Dr. Seuss at Sea, right? The Seuss at Sea event on board. There's, there's a script of sorts that you have to follow. You can kind of improvise when it comes to talking to the guests and whatnot, but you got to know the scripts. You got to kind of know how that works. You know, that takes a little while. It's a, there's some studying to do on that type of thing. Same thing, Hasbro, the game show. That's a branded event. Things like the, the big 80s rock and glow deck party. Um, you know, there's things that you have to say and there's an order and kind of way how it works. But they've done it so many times, thousands of times on so many ships over the years. They've got it down to a science now. And they say, this is what's going to work. That's not going to work. So go with this, right? So there's certain mm -hmm. things to choreograph. And there's times where it could take a little... Uh, a little bit to kind of memorize the script or get comfortable. But to be honest, after you, after you do it a few times, it becomes second nature and it just, it, it flows. It flows. Nice. I, I would definitely be a bit intimidating trying to do all the shows by myself for the first time. And kind of along the same lines of Barba Pepper asks, who is your favorite cruise director aside from yourself? Is it the original one that you were kind of leading against or someone else? Favorite cruise director. Oh man, you pick a kid. Who's your favorite kid? Favorite kid? Oh, God. There's, a, there's a lot of cruise directors that I worked with that I'm, you know, I, I'm proud to say that we're at one point where my assistant cruise directors, um, there's a lot of cruise directors that I didn't have the privilege of working with before they actually got the promotions. Um, some of the guys that I could say that I, uh, that I really became close with, um, Kevin Donahue, who's on the Elation right now, um, Chris Salazar, Donkey, he's on the Liberty, uh, Matt Mitchum, Everson Bevel, uh, Dr. E. I mean, those guys were all my mm -hmm. assistant cruise directors at one point, um, and they're all extremely successful, amazing cruise directors. But, you know, I became so close. You, you become really close with these guys. It's a small fraternity of cruise directors. Um, Jamie Deitch, Jamie is one of, my, uh, one of my bestest friends in the world, and I love her dearly. So super talented. But all of these guys and girls at one point I worked with, and you become really close over the years. You go to conferences. You don't get to work with them very much because there's one cruise mm -hmm. shit. But you, you build bonds. You talk. You email. You share stories. You, you pass information along amongst each other. I mean, so, so I, I don't know if there's one that I could say. It's, it's not fair. Mm -hmm. We don't want to make you choose anyway. Of course, you probably so many good ones. <laughs> we'll do that to me. Um, so along that type of line, uh, you still had a cruise assistant, correct, for your time period while you were a cruise director? I did, up until I got on the Conquest um, last year, um, when they switched over from just a cruise director to an entertainment mm -hmm. and cruise director. So when I was just a cruise director, yeah, there was an assistant cruise director that would kind of take over the duties of, of managing and supervising the entertainment staff or the social host team way back when, mm -hmm. um, to... Now, as a cruise director, when I, when I just left, and the cruise director is now with an entertainment director, the cruise directors are still, you know, the face and voice of the ship, but they're doing a lot of, a lot of other things behind the scenes. They're doing a lot of training and supervising the staff and trying to get them up and running and, and, and like that. So the assistant cruise director position is actually slowly getting transitioned out as they've brought in the entertainment director, cruise director format. And for those of you who don't know what that is, entertainment director is now in charge of the entertainment department. Um, and the cruise director is sort of a senior manager and a senior level on the ships, but report to the entertainment director, actually. So you went from being the guy to reporting to the guy. Mm. <laughs> Responsibilities. So have you ever been... Oh, I can let go, though. Have you ever been in a bad storm before? And what did you do in that type of situation? So. Is this a question or is somebody else asking? Uh, this is uh, Barbara Pepper asks. <laughs> so the, re the reason I ask is because there's a lot of people that are afraid to cruise because if all they've seen out is, is, is CNN or watched any reports and go, 
tear on the seas and ships and those storms. It's not like that at all. You'll hit some bad, you'll hit some storms every once in a while and the ship will rock a little bit. But mm -hmm. um, the worst storm that I ever encountered was actually in 2005. Um, and I believe I was on the Destiny. Um, I think it was on Destiny. And it was right after one of the hurricanes had come through and we hit 36 foot swells. Oh, wow. Um, which was pretty insane considering that during that, and, and the swells are different than the waves. The swells are like slow, steady mm -hmm. waves, right? Where you, 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 there's no other way to, to bounce the ship. I mean, it's just slowly going up and down like a roller coaster. You look out the windows at the top of a swell and all you can see is air, right? It looks like you're floating, you're flying. At the bottom of the swell, you just see a wall of water. It was 36 foot swells. Everybody on board was sick, including the officers. They put all the pukey bags up in the in the <laughs> elevator. That was fun. Oh gosh! Um, it was the only time that I ever actually felt a little sick. Was there a lot of mess to clean up usually after that type of period, or was it pretty uh, well maintained? Yeah, yes, yeah, it's very well maintained. I think they put Dramamine in all the drinks of all the housekeeping teams. <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> but. But yeah, it was uh, it was not fun at all. Yeah, I don't usually get too seasick, but I mean, if you're drinking a little bit, it might intensify type of situations a bit more. Yeah, if you're drinking, it it makes it better. Oh gosh, I can only imagine. Is it just me or am I wobbling a little bit more? <laughs> well, the old the old stupid cruise director joke is you always know the people in a storm that have been drinking. They're the only ones walking straight. <laughs> God. Uh, Carissi Kali asks, what is the one tip you would give to everyone when they go ashore? Have a plan. This is easy. There's times okay. where people, especially first timers, um, if you decide to get off the ship and you haven't either booked a shore excursion or looked at a map or put together a plan, you'll, you'll wander up and down the street, depending on the port. Um, you mm -hmm. might find some things to do and wander around and come back and go, well, that was kind of boring. But if you put together a plan, if you mm -hmm. actually decide, book a shore excursion or talk to a few of the staff, right? The best thing to do when you get on a ship, talk to the staff and ask them their opinions on it because they have no problem telling you where to go, what to see and what to do, whether it be a carnival organized excursion or not. Mm -hmm. They'll definitely give you their favorites, but have a plan without a doubt. Definitely the best thing. So I feel like, you know, with your new transition and your new job, you know, planning is kind of what you do. So can you explain what you do right now and why did you make the change from cruise director to pvp um why did i make the change mm -hmm. i'll tell you what what if i just show you okay that works as well all right hold on hold, hold on <laughs> oh gosh oh this, this is morgan well, hello, um, morgan she's a little over six months now um, and, and, um, my wife and I actually, uh, we, she was born in October and I'll, I'll never forget before she was born, um, talking to everybody and saying, you know, I'm a cruise director. I belong in the ships. There's no way that I'm going to, to leave that. This is my lifestyle. This is what I love to do. Um, and, and, uh, you know, there's officers and captains, they got families back home. I could do it too. Well, the first night that I had her in my arms, I started crying and I looked at my wife and I said, I know I'm a big sap, by the way. And I said, I just can't go back. I just can't do it. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, so this is my little girl, Morgan, and this is the reason why I've decided to come and now work in Carnival's, Carnival's consumer sales office. And uh, I figured after 13 years out at sea and working on all the ships and doing all the ports and maybe I could do something like, uh, like help people have a great vacation and help out on the planning side. So, so I decided to uh, become a personal vacation planner. So basically what I do is I, uh, I, I'm using my, my past experience to giving people the cruise of their lives. People have questions about the ports and they don't know what ships to go on. And they, they're asking me advice about, Hey, what shows will be on here? Well, mm -hmm. I figured nobody knows it better than me. So and what, ex what exactly do you plan? Exactly. Do you plan excursions, booking the ship or, what exactly? Like, take me to, if I'm going to go to you and ask you, you know, I'm a whole new cruiser, what can you do for me exactly? Well, I can book the cruises. I can plan mm -hmm. out. I can plan and personalize your cruise vacation. I don't really do anything on the short excursion side, but 
Uh, okay. After you get the cruises, you can actually go into carnival.com and you can go in and you can kind of plan your itineraries and plan your ports, exactly what I was just talking about before. Um, uh, but I'll help you kind of pick the right ship and, and put together an, an amazing time. People that have families or kids, like I'll know, uh, I'll know kind of where to send you, right? Mm -hmm. Nice. So how many different ships are usually in a carnival fleet? in uh, the u.s how many different carnival ships are there usually in the u.s that you're able to choose from or are you able to book outside of the u.s as well as a pvp no it's a great question um the only ships that we don't have access to right now uh would be the ones going out of australia which would be the spirit and the legend is seasonal um mm -hmm. but we actually could book the legend when it does the cruises to alaska and hawaii and it's doing a lot of that out of the pacific but pretty much carnival north america carnival australia does an amazing job by the way um, but it's kind of like a, like almost a, a separate entity from Carnival, right? It's still Carnival ships and, you know, it's Carnival cruise directors that go out there, but they have separate, like, uh, like um, a sales team that take care of those bookings and, and the ships out there. Again, I've been out there. I've done it. I can answer any questions and help anybody. In fact, my Carnival Australia family is, uh, we're still very close on Facebook and everything. So I still keep in touch with a lot of people who, Asked me a lot of questions about those ports too. Uh, those those are amazing. The Pacific was completely different than North America, but in terms of booking, I pretty much just do the North American ships. Nice. So I've uh, been on a couple different Carnival ships now. I've been on two: the Triumph and the Vista. What would you recommend? Sorry, the Magic. Sorry, we're going on the Vista in October. Sorry, jumped the gun a little bit there. So besides uh, the Vista, the Magic, and the Triumph. You know, I'm kind of a middle experience type of cruiser, I would say, at the moment. What do you think would be kind of a fun new ship for me to try out? Try a Spirit class ship. Try okay. a, the Miracle. The Miracle is great. You know, we talked about the Spirit and the Legend, but, but um, try the Miracle or the Pride. Pride goes out of Baltimore. Uh, great, great people out of the Northeast and New York and, and Pennsylvania area. But I like the Spirit class ships. Um, but really, any one of the ships, any one mm -hmm. of the ships will have something different for everybody. The good thing about it is there's always something for everybody, right? From mm -hmm. the kids, you know, the carnival is really good when it comes to families and planning for the families. But, you know, they've got something for the adults as well, right? You know, we're talking mm -hmm. nightclubs and the Serenity decks and everything. So really, there's no bad ships for anybody. I, I don't mean to blow you off, but the truth is, one of the best things about carnival, one of the things I love about this company is there's always something for everybody. There's a very wide demographic. Mm -hmm. when it comes to the guests on board, right? <laughs> if she falls asleep or spits up on me, it's, 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 it's okay. <laughs> okay, I think that uh, kind of wraps up pretty much everything. Thank you so much, Josh. Uh, we really had, or Big Sexy, I really had a great time talking to you, and thanks for explaining what exactly a PvP is. <laughs> you can call me whatever I, what my wife does. It's okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. Goodbye, Morgan. Have a wonderful day, Josh. Bye, everybody. Bye, Morgan. <laughs> Bye, Matt. Thanks, Josh. And you can still get a hold of him on his Facebook page. Just search for Big Sexy Cruise Director and you'll find him. Okay, hold on. I think I hear a crazy complaint story coming up. The guest services can another crazy complaint. Fishy Wood from Cruise Critic sent this one in. Some people just don't stop and think about the consequences of complaining for complaining's sake. On one cruise, he saw a man going completely ape, calling the purser's desk staff every name in the book because one of his piece of luggage was still not delivered yet, at only around 6.30. When the cruise was beginning with an overnight at an embarkation port. And due to major weather issues, plenty of people were still arriving at that hour due to flight delays. So there was, certainly was a lot of luggage that was still on the pier waiting to be delivered. But don't try to fool this guy with logic. His voice boomed throughout the atrium with luggage and this whole other terrible language that would make a sailor blush. Finally, a senior officer came out and asked him to step into his office, which this guy refused to do. Fishy would wish he would have stuck around to see what security would summon. Because if there was, this clown would almost certainly not have been escorted back to the office, but down the gangway and out. Getting chucked off or violating the passage contract or other ships rule before initial sail away happens, which is a lot more than one person usually hears about. If you can't be on your best behavior on day one, they don't want to know about day two. And this was a 16-night cruise. 
and he didn't remember seeing him later on. I know there's a reason I should never run the guest service on a desk cruise ship. Our photo of the week comes from the Carnival Magic Cruise Group, and this features Bob Dasher, a.k.a. Santa, entering the Harry Chess Contest on the Carnival Magic. I don't think I will ever look at Santa the same again. And where did the bra come from? I, I actually don't want to know. If you guys have a fun photo, you can send it to photos at cruiseweek.tv, and maybe you'll be featured on the show. We live stream on many platforms. Facebook is one, YouTube, of course, but also Periscope. And I want to thank Kathy from RC Periscopers Group for helping us out over in that chat room and keeping order over there. If you want to see a lot of live streams from people on ships, head over to the RC's Periscopers Group on Facebook for a list. If you like our show and you want more, you may want to consider joining the Cruise Week Inner Circle. You can find out more by going to cruiseweek.com, sorry, cruiseweek.tv slash support. And with your support, it helps us bring you great videos and guests each week and helps us raise money to bring five more new cruisers on a trip of a lifetime. So head over to cruiseweek.tv slash support and see all of that, which is over to offer there. Next week, Joe is back with Matt Hotchberg from the Royal Caribbean blog as his co-host and Joe's guest. So check out Royal Caribbean show with Joe and Matt. I will be back with Shally and Jess the week after. So keep watching, keep telling your friends about our show and please like and subscribe. Also share the video around. The more you share the videos, the more energy you give us to work harder and bring you the best possible shows and videos every week. So till next time, I'm Matt and I'll see you on the ships.